The energy we use to run our cars and our bodies is chemical energy. Chemical energy is the energy stored in the bonds that hold atoms and molecules together. I'm going to explore the energy in chemical bonds using this reaction, which is the formation of water from hydrogen and oxygen gas. Start by looking at some of the components of the reaction. First, here's a molecule of hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is comprised of two hydrogen atoms held together by a single covalent bond. The thing to really hold on to is that when this bond was formed between these two atoms of hydrogen, energy was released. The same is true for the other molecules. We also have the oxygen gas, but instead of one covalent bond, it's a double covalent bond holding these two oxygen atoms together in a molecule. When a reaction occurs with these as the inputs, first what happens is the bonds holding the molecules together are broken. The atoms in the molecules are then rearranged and new bonds are formed. And this is the general process for all chemical reactions. Break bonds, rearrange atoms, form new bonds. But packed into this is a bunch of concepts that we need to pull out. The first thing to see is that when this reaction, when I showed this reaction, we had to add atoms to create the two water molecules. And this is referred to as balancing the equation. What balancing the equation means is that matter, the atoms involved in the chemical reaction, cannot be created or destroyed. So we need the same number of atoms on one side of the reaction as we have on the other. In order to, and that's, that's referred to as balancing the, the reaction. In this case, for a balanced reaction with two, two atoms of oxygen in a molecule of oxygen gas, we need two molecules of hydrogen to provide the four atoms of hydrogen that are needed to make two molecules of water. So if we have two hydrogen plus one oxygen equals two waters, we have a balanced equation and there are four hydrogen and two oxygen atoms on either side of this equation. A little bit more terminology, the components, the molecules that go into a chemical reaction are called the reactants and the molecules that are produced after the atoms are rearranged and new bonds are formed are called the products. So this is the general form of an equation. The reactants separated by pluses, an arrow to separate the reactants from the products. And if there were more than one product in this reaction, those products would be separated by pluses as well. With this overview of what a chemical reaction looks like, we can start looking at the energetics. I'm going to define bond energy as the energy associated with the chemical bonds. The SI unit for, chemical, for bond energy is the kilojoule per mole, but the unit of kilocal per mole is also commonly used, and that's what I'm gonna be using in this presentation. Each bond type has a different amount of energy associated with it. So in this chemical reaction, to figure out how much energy is either absorbed or released during the reaction, we need to look at all the different bonds and the energy associated with each of them. Start with the hydrogen-hydrogen single bond, which has 130, 103 kilocals associated with it. The oxygen-oxygen double bond has 116 kilocals. And the only bond in the, re, in the products is, the, is an oxygen-hydrogen single bond, and those have 110 kilocals associated with them. To help hold on to the idea that this process the goal of this process is to understand how much energy is either released or absorbed by a chemical reaction. You need to think of the chemical, the bond energy as the energy either required to break the bonds in the reactants or the energy released when the bonds are formed in the products. If you hold on to that sort of definition and the difference between the bonds and the reactants and the products, the logic of this process will be easier to, to keep track of. So now we can be quantitative. We want to do a little bit of accounting. To do this, we need the bond energy associated with each type of bond and the number of the bonds. We'll start with the hydrogen. There are one, two hydrogen single bonds, each with an energy of 103 kilocals. So that's 206 kilocals. There's one oxygen-oxygen double bond. And so the energy required to break the bonds in the reactants of this reaction is 206 plus 116, or 322 kilocals. Go over to the other side of the, the reaction and do the same thing with the products. We have one bond type, 
hydrogen oxygen single bond. There are four of them. So the energy released when two water molecules are formed, or two moles of water molecules are formed, is 110 kilocals times four, or 440 kilocals. So now we have the energy required to start the reaction and the energy released when the reaction is finished. And to figure out the energetics, we just take the difference of the energy in minus the energy out. In this case, we get 118 kilocals. And what this means is that when two, water, two moles of water are formed from two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen gas, 118 kilocals of energy is released. Now notice we've had two moles formed here and often we're interested in energy per mole. And since two moles of water are formed, to get the kilocal per mole, we divide by the number of moles. Another way to look at this is that 59 kilocals per mole of energy is released when, hydrogen, when a mole of water is formed from hydrogen and oxygen gas. It's important to recognize that this, this reaction can be driven in the opposite direction, but to do so, energy needs to be put in. And since we're breaking and rearranging the same bonds just in the opposite direction, the same amount of energy is required except that it's being put into the reaction. So to take two moles of water and turn it into hydrogen and oxygen gas will require 118 kilocals or 59 kilocals per mole. That's a basic overview of the energetics of chemical reactions and why these ball and stick figures are useful in doing these calculations because it makes it very easy to see the number and type of bonds associated with specific, specific chemical reactions. But keep in mind, this is just a representation of the more standard way to show a chemical reaction is with the chemical formulas. So that stick figure diagram is equal to this simpler representation, which says that two moles of hydrogen gas plus one mole of oxygen will yield two moles of water.